so here are the answers to um, the assessment from last week. The, um, you know, just a circle assessment and the like. Uh, here's the answer to the first question. Pretty straightforward. Central angle is equal to the arc, and the right angle implies it's 90 degrees. They tell me it's 43 degrees, so that I can figure out all the arcs. And then here are the answers, if you just want to look at it real quick. This was pretty straightforward. Most people got it correct. Uh, not a big deal. Okay, so that's the first one. Um, number two, another straightforward question on a topic that we did earlier. Uh, AC is going to be equal to AD because a point outside the circle to a tangent on the circle, those are congruent segments. Set the algebras equal to each other to solve for x. They tell you that BD is 10, so uh, all radii are 10. And then I would use Pythagorean theorem to figure out AB, which I rounded to 25.1. Again, I thought the first two questions were pretty straightforward. Number three, um, again, I don't think that was too bad. I'm looking here. Again, I like the first answer. 128 minus 32 pi. I, I think that you're just going to get used to writing these answers more as you get older. Uh, that's the decimal equivalence. Again, we're assuming square units for all answers. Uh, this one, okay, 120 degrees is one-third, so the shaded area is two-thirds of 64 pi because the radius is 8 and you get the decimal equivalent of 128 pi over 3. The third one, if you recall, um, if the radius is 6, then the diameter is 12. It's a semicircle, so it's going to be the shaded region is half of 36 pi, which is 18 pi, and you're subtracting the area of the triangle, which is 18, because this distance is also 6. Again, the decimal equivalent, square units are assumed. Question four, I think most people did pretty well with this also. The percentage of students who like Mrs. Quinn and Ms. D'Amico, if you add up the percentages, the right angle for Mrs. Quinn implies it's 90 degrees, which would be 25%. And then the leftover percentage is 5% for Ms. D'Amico. So that's what I was looking for for that question. And then finding the arcs, again, you're using the percentage, if you will. Uh, ACB is 60% of 360 degrees, which is 216. BE is 30% of 360. EF is 10%, uh, 5 percent, excuse me, of th uh, 360. And ADE is an angle. It's a central angle. 10% is 36 degrees, so the angle is 36 degrees. Most people, if they got anything wrong, it was with the bottom of this page. So, you know, again, i got to look at this a little bit closely. Uh, the answers are provided. It's a little bit of a scratch, but take a look at it. I know <coughs> that the diameter of each of these smaller circles is 5, so the radius is 2.5. Okay? Um, the area of the semicircle, if it's entirely given, it's going to be one-half pi of 7.5 squared. So that's the area of the whole thing, like this shape, if you will. Okay. Now there's three smaller circles, each with an area of one-half pi 2.5 squared, and then you subtract. And that's where I get 18.75 pi with a decimal equivalent of 58.9. The dartboard problem, how I would do that would be, I would find the area of the outer ring first. The entire circle is has a radius of 25, because each of these parts is 5. So the entire area is 625 pi. From here, that's a radius of 20, 400 pi, pi r squared. 
So the area of the outer ring is 225 pi. Now, get rid of the outer ring, and now find the area here. This would be 15 to the smaller shaded ring, and then subtract 100 pi, because the radius is 10 of the unshaded. And that's where you get 125 pi, and then you add the two shaded rings together and get 350 pi. I would say most people got that question wrong, if you did. Uh, the other questions are more straightforward at the bottom here, if you can read this. Um, just recall that if this is 6 radical 3, then this is a 60 degree, that's a 30, so this is 6. And then the uh, diameter is double 6, which is 12. So the radius is 6. So the area of the circle is 636 pi. Now subtract 1 half of 6 times 6 radical 3, which is 18 radical 3. This is the answer I want my students to get. But a lot of you then made the decimal equivalent, which was OK for this example. Uh, over here. I know that this distance is 6. Uh, this distance is 12 radical 2 because it's a 45, 45, 90. So I know the radius is 6 radical 2. Pi r squared, 6 radical 2 squared is 72. 72 pi minus the area of the square, 144. Again, that's the answer I'm looking for. And then the last question I think I did this one for those who were at the virtual class the day it was due. Uh, the area of the whole thing, if you will, okay, is 45 over 360 times 100 pi, which is because the radius is 10. And then I'm going to subtract the little part, which is 45 over 60 times 16 pi, because the radius is 4. And this is the answer if you simplify it to about 10.5 pi or around 33. Page 3 of the quiz, uh, you know, I would just fill in the blanks here. However you did was fine. There were multiple answers for 2 and 6. I even accepted PQN for number 6. Some people put PQN. I know it's hard to teach, but I would go all the way through. So PQN, you see how N is not the um, on the edge of the circle, if you will? So PQT is what I was looking for, but I did accept it. LPT is also half of the arc. Um, but that is those are the answers for the top of page 3. I would say that most people may have mixed a couple of these up at the bottom of page 3. Again, match the letter with the answers. I think that might be the best scenario here, and just take a look at it. Okay? And again, use your skills, knowing that the inscribed angle is half the arc, and then the angle out here, remember, is half of the bigger arc minus the smaller arc. Um, these are the letters that match with the answers. However you did it, some students drew lines, which I thought was the best way. Some people just wrote the letters next to it or whatever. I mean, I, I, I found out uh, your answer. So that was page three. Again, you can just take a look at those answers. And page four, um, most people really got page four right. Uh, the first one is the pentagon. So the formula is n minus 2 times 180 for the sum of all of the angles. If you work that out, you get 540. Subtract the knowns, and you get a missing angle of 128. Here, it's, a, it's not a regular hexagon. It's a hexagon. n minus 2 times 180 is 720. Subtract the knowns, and then these two are equal, so you had to divide by 2 to get 135. Uh, filling in the chart. Again, you're going to use the formulas to figure it all out. The sum of the exteriors of any polygon are 360. Some of the interiors, you're using the formula. You might have to work backwards here. For example, for letter B, you don't know the number of sides times 180, and you set it equal to 2,160. And that's how you solve for 14. And um, 
than just using the formula. You figured out the missing angles. Um, I allowed the rounding for the second one. Anyway, uh, those were the answers for number seven. And at the bottom, the formula for the number of diagonals is n times n minus three over two. That was really not in your book, but I did tell those who were at the um, virtual class the formula for finding the number of diagonals. And if you fill it in, you get these two answers. So that was the quiz. I mean, real, realistically, it was a 45-point quiz. Nobody got everything right, but a lot of people got like 43s and 44s because you got a lot right and uh, did very well. Okay, thank you.